Before breaking ground on the Lower Hill Redevelopment Project and during our public meetings, we introduced a fictional character named Sterling Johnson from the August Wilson play Radio Golf. Sterling was in the construction trades, had a strong work ethic, and his own trouble with the unions. Today, with construction of the First National Bank Financial Center well out of the ground and hundreds of workers on the job site, Sterling's fictional character represents non-fictional human beings. The Lower Hill Project has taken us out of the land of make-believe and as of August 2022, into $44 million in awarded subcontracts to minority and women-owned businesses, of which $24 million were awarded to Black-owned businesses alone, each of whom comes with real names and their own stories to tell. My name is Curtis Moorhead. The name of my company is Emerald Electrical Services, LLC. I grew up in Robinson Court which is one of the projects formerly in the Hill District. And I remember seeing uh, very few of us out there working construction or skilled trades. Back in 1979, when I started um, my apprenticeship, and they made it a point to let you know, uh, clearly, I'd say 50% of the people didn't want you there and weren't trying to teach you anything. When we first started Emerald Electrical, there were major financial challenges. Uh, we, we endeavored to get money from banks and, you know, um, other institutions, other financial institutions. They wanted to loan you $5,000, which was, you know, with, with, the, with the, being a union electrical contracting business, the payroll was paramount. On a weekly basis, you had to make sure that, you know, that you pay your guys and they're making, you know, whatever, $30 an hour and, you know, $5,000 really wasn't going to help very much. So partnerships has been everything for a company like Triple Three Construction. We're a small interiors contractor. We weren't big enough or, or experienced enough to take on a $242 million tower with a $8 million interiors packing. We partnered with a larger interior contractor firm that allowed us to bite off a piece that was manageable to us. And this is possible thanks to the work of the Lower Hill Community Development Board, Buccini Pollen Group, and the elected officials who are pushing to have minority and African American companies involved on a project like this. It's opened plenty of doors for Triple Three and it's gonna allow us to grow into the future. In addition to larger construction contracts of millions or hundreds of thousands of dollars, the Buccini Poland Group supports small businesses, even if the contract is only $1,000. I was born in the Hill District on Western Avenue. So the contract that I received from BPG um, was really, really helpful to my business. Um, and it definitely was helpful at a time when I was just getting, coming back out um, into Cato. I had them construction workers eating vinegar and hot sauce on their greens. Yes, I did. Come on now, let me tell you. The opportunity that the Buccini Poland Group extended to Cheyenne by hiring her as a chef uh, and a caterer for an event they had, not only was great for revenue boosting for her, but it really, really boosted her confidence as a caterer. So as the executive director of Catapult Greater Pittsburgh, it is my job to find, develop, and implement programming that is intentional and in creating intentional opportunities for wealth building and basically economic justice for black families within Allegheny County. Our uh, definitely technical assistance and, and continued support in their personal and professional development, but they also need real opportunity like access to storefronts, access to commercial kitchens, access to larger markets such as Giant Eagle Whole Foods and places where they can put their products and wares and reach a larger market outside of their own communities. 
when their children see them operating their own businesses and realize, wait a minute, this is something I can do as well. It, I think not only does it help the families uh, at building legacy wealth, but it's creating legacy wealth for communities. Government accountability and community organizing is a part of our story and a necessary element of what makes up our success. My vision is to use the redevelopment of the Lower Hill to create generational wealth in the rest of the community, to bring a socially and economically vibrant community back to life. Um, the City of Pittsburgh has minority women-owned business participation goals, um, and our goals are 18 and 7. On this site, we said that's not enough. We need to double it, and if we can do anything, surpass it. So at a minimum, we want to have 30% participation. It is one thing to have a plan. It's another thing to actually work that plan day in and day out to ensure that you're hitting those goals. And thankfully, Bomani House is a part of BPG now, and I know he works day in and day out to ensure we're hitting those goals. And thankfully, in my conversations with uh, Chris Puccini, He's committed to allowing his team to actually hit those goals. I would like to see a community where my children can thrive, that is healthy and safe and vibrant and has thriving black businesses. Um, it's culturally prosperous. Um, I would like to see a community that you can go from the upper hill all the way through the lower hill and feel very proud that you live there. Another reinvestment delivered from lead commercial developer, the Buccini Polling Group, is the first source center, a workforce center, a business development resource, and a construction training and contracting pipeline, which includes our partnership with the Pittsburgh Public Schools Career and Technical Education Program, as well as with the Builders Guild a. Philip Randolph Institute, the Carpenter's Apprentice Readiness Program, and Bankworks. A strong community, government accountability, corporate leadership, and equitable development. Here in Pittsburgh, this is the Lower Hill story and what we mean when we say, be a part of something bigger. Every highlighted name is an actual Hill District resident. All the names are the people that are working on the project, but we want you to, be, to see and be very, very clear that it's not just me, it's not just Bomani House who is the present today, but you have Hill residents working all across this entire uh, team from Daniel Lavelle, our, our fabulous city councilman who's here, to Jake Wheatley, who's now the chief of staff of the mayor, to Marimba Alliance of the Hill CDC, to uh, Janae Williams from E Holding. So it's really important, y'all, because honestly, this has never been done before. And you're, we're going to talk about a lot of things that have never been done before, but they're being done now. Next slide. So from our development project team, we do have Desmo, we have CJL Engineering. Up Studio Landscaping, I know that that's a women-owned business. Studio Bolshi, which is an African-American women-owned business. Uh, Michael Baker, THA Contracting, Advantage Engineers, Trocotech, SciTech, Cosmos, and also an African-American um, company. And obviously you have the development team, the Buccini Poland Group, and the Pittsburgh Payments. Next slide. So, this is the image that you all have been seeing over and over and over again. We now have, thankfully, an updated you know, rendering. But this is the overall Lower Hill redevelopment. It consists of the uh, 20 fl 26 floor tower, which is the first national bank. That is the anchor tenant. That is the reason why we are creating the Lower Hill redevelopment. And as a Hill resident, I just feel the need to mention to you all Every community, if they're going to have any type of reinvestment, any type of upward mobility, everybody needs an economic anchor. The South Side, you all know about the South Side. You've seen the changes on the South Side. The South Side had an economic anchor. It's called the FBI building. Congressman Doyle made sure that the FBI building would be placed there. And once the FBI building was coming, the question was, well, where, where are the people going to live? Where are they going to play? 
What are they going to do with their families? Where are they going to school? And then suddenly we started to see changes on the south side. This lower hill redevelopment project is our economic anchor. Everybody needs one. So we have the 26 foot tower. We have the parking garage, as you know, is coming. There are other office buildings. There is also housing, which is not a part of tonight's presentation, but we will definitely get there eventually. Um, and there's a proposed hotel. So what you're looking at is the total uh, Lower Hill Redevelopment Project. And then if you would, because this was a community demand and it, you'll see it a bit more clearly, but the reconnection to Wiley Avenue you can literally look and see, that's Wiley Avenue right there in the middle. You can come up from town and come through the neighborhood park, the Frankie May Pace Park, and continue on up, up the hill or down the hill to Wiley Avenue. So we want to make sure that good things truly are flowing uphill. Next slide. All right, and so, you know, you all, many of you all were there. It was a terrible day, actually. Um, for weather, but we uh, have been at the groundbreaking for the first National Bank Tower. We have assisted Big Tom's uh, Barbershop. That's uh, on the lower right is the, I'm sorry, the, your lower left, is the opening of the first source center. And then of course we have the groundbreaking of SMB. Next slide. And then we get to here, this is now the updated rendering. And this is important, we'll come back to this uh, once we come back to the community reinvestment, but it's really good for you to see the tower, see the, the open space that's next to it. We're doing a lot with the open space and we have an announcement even tonight about the artists that are gonna be working on the open space. And so now I'm gonna turn it over to Boris Kaplan, our Senior Vice President of Development. Thank you very much, Dr. Ellis. Can uh, the folks in the back of the room hear me okay? I see not again. So uh, again, th thank you all for coming out. I, I know I was excited to be participating in an in-person meeting. It's been a few years without these. Uh, glad to see other people were sharing the, uh, the excitement of being back in the room together. I want to thank our hosts once again, the Hill District Collaborative and the Hill District Consensus Group. Thank you for facilitating this very important conversation. Uh, not to say from the folks who are here speaking tonight, really on behalf of the entire development team and for us at the Machini Polling Group, where we have so many members of our organization working week in and week out to make the vision that you see up on the screen uh, a reality, not just in terms of the development of buildings, but really capturing the moment and realizing opportunities on a very open space. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So uh, going from uh, a pretty photorealistic uh, vision to the overall development program, just to set the context for today's conversation, uh, Dr. Ross, great introductory remarks. I'm going to make one minor correction. Just in case uh and be our uh anchor tenants listening, we're building a 26-story tower, a 26 foot tall tower. Uh just want to make sure I don't get some hot water after tonight's prepared for parks. But uh you can see that in, in blue uh on the draw key but, uh second from the lower hill. Uh, we were very excited to break ground on that very important investment last September. And when we were describing the blockchain tower project, we saw all along, um, we needed the garage, we needed the infrastructure, we needed the complementary blockchain project to uh, follow in very close order. Focus for the SEA, the URA, the development team was in doing everything possible. As LaBelle remembers this, we had to get one project. Uh, through the starting gates to demonstrate the power of reinvestment. And now we'll come back and speak to you tonight about a lot. Next slide, please. Thank you. So, uh, looking at a quick snapshot of what Block E is, and I realize that the image might get a little zoomed out. When you zoom into the center, what we call the center of energy, Block E is two and a half acres. It's going to be composed of both a garage with about 900 apartment spaces. And a music venue that we're so excited about, a vibrancy about patronage, 
about the reactivation of Wiley Avenue. That's about a 4,500 person music venue. There's ground floor retail and commercial space. There's an incubator for startup businesses that uh, was very much part of our initial discussions with the SBA URI back in 2019. Uh, to be included in the program, and that's part of what we're developing with Block E. You should also note that there are public assets being developed, not just um, not just commercial space. On the back side of the garage, there's a 5,000 square foot public safety facility that takes outdated um, assets for the city on Avenue of sorry, Boulevard of the Allies and moves it to the Hill District. A very important move not just for the lower hill and for the greater hill oh there's more right so there's not just buildings and design there's a whole lot of reinvestment and that's going to be the focus of our next uh few minutes talking about the learning uh the tax abatement program that's shared with the lower hill and the middle number hill there's a significant amount of contracting use of contracting with minority owned and women owned businesses and we'll report on that. And really exciting bit of this project, there's a investment for apartment tax diversion into uh, stabilization and rehabilitation of housing in the hill district. Next slide, please. Sorry for the layer in the small uh, font size, but this really speaks to the flyers that have been handed out to you all. Um, really, the emphasis here is specifically about a timeline. There is an opportunity. To, thank you. On the front page of the flyer, there is information about walking in the timeline. Uh, our design team, led by Eric Booth, will speak about the level of our planning efforts. They're, they're really pretty important things. They'll be on the screen in the next 45 days with the construction manager and with potential bidders. And we're very excited to uh, find a move forward with a concern starting early in the next So, one of the things that we wanted to do in this presentation is to demonstrate the lower hill minority in the own business engagement and, and uh, our MWBD plans and how they tie specifically to the economic empowerment. And commercial development community goals that are expressed in the Greater Health District Master Plan. Um, again, some of this information is available on the slides, but we want to just note that on the Block G First National Bank Financial Center project, we have contract commitments to over 70 from 70 minority women owned businesses that are participating in redevelopment and the construction of that project. Uh, of those contracts, 43 of those contracts are on the construction phase of the development. That's a secondary number. You know, some of those contracts are small, they're $15,000, $25,000. One of the contracts is over $7 million. It's an incredible range that represents uh, a lot of effort to break apart contracts, to build partnerships to build capacity to overcome some of the contractual limitations for participation. We're very proud of the work that we've done with our construction manager, PJ Dennis, and some PJ Dick representatives of the world. Uh, I will note that beyond what we're doing on the lower room, we're pushing for systemic change. And so is PJ Dick. Their, uh, their uh, project coordinator in charge of these exclusive plans has been promoted with PJ. He now oversees the rollout of the lower hill plan across the region. And we're really excited that this is going to create amazing opportunities in other projects for minority owned businesses. Just real quick, uh, in addition to the business opportunities or the opportunities for contracting for business owners, uh, individuals are getting a great opportunity to work on this project. We track these numbers every month. It's an example of the month of July. Where 31% of the hours spent working on that tower across the street was done by minority workforce. If you walk past the site, if you're driven past the site, and you look over, you know. But we have to make sure that all of our reporting backs up. And we think that 
and we're on the two other so we could start and we're very great to work with one of our two members to get us there. Uh, I'll just tell them a the line. There's an image of a way of something speaker in the video that preceded our presentation. We'll make sure that we uh, circulate the link to that video so people have a chance to hear it and listen to the impact of what happened. Thank you, next slide. Real quickly, these plans that we have around making a new business station aren't just for the tower, they're also on the lot E. Trevor could speak to the team that he's building. Uh, around the redevelopment efforts with Lockheed. E. There are five African American owned businesses that are helping with the design of this project, six uh, local women owned businesses that are involved in designing the music venue and garage, and there's a very large non local FBD that's involved in the engineering of the garage project like this. Uh, I mentioned that there's a lot of more effort happening in the truck side um, that gets kicked off by E Holdings uh, over the course of the next few months. Next slide, You'll hear a lot of time about Florida, very important that the tax abatement program is shared 50 50 between the lower hill and the middle and upper hill. Uh, for the block in e Florida, we work with the SCA and the URA offices of the, uh, the season uh, EMC members to start a study making a project and then look at the kinds of um, annual benefits that will arise from the tax abatement sharing. It's projected right now to be about $445,000 across the music venue and the garage on an annual basis across 10 years. The projection is for about $4.46 million to be turned over to the Greater Hill District Neighborhood Investment Fund. And I, I see that folks grabbing screenshots of this. And we'll, we'll share this. We'll make sure everyone has a copy of the of the analysis. Moving on to uh, the next slide, I'm going to use this last slide and get out of the way. So now it means they're alert enough, but there's parking tax diversion that takes the tax dollars from the first 20 years of the operating to the garage and reinvests that into the economic development required to build the garage, but also 25% of all the tax dollars will go over 20 years into housing stabilization, house rehabilitation efforts in the Hill District. So again, there's no housing on Lot E. Right now, it's a service parking lot. When the project gets built, there'll be 20 years of investment in housing in the Hill District. So these are just two of the, you know, Several of the group of working on this car we invested in the brand. We're also here to talk about a little bit of the design and programming behind the project. Thank you all for coming out. With that, I'll turn it over to to Eric. Eric, thank you. Right, thank you, Boris. Um, we have a lot of text slides. We have a couple more interesting. We have some uh, pictures. So, my name is Eric Booth. I'm the president of uh, Desdon Architects. Uh, we're the lead designers on the project. Uh, I'm an architect myself. Uh, we're just here representing a very large team of professionals. Can you guys hear me in there? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. all right. So, as I say, um, we represent a team of professionals that are involved in this project. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through the design of this standing today. Um, where we are in the process is that we've actually submitted to the city. We've had a preliminary uh, on the fashion map. Our plans go in front of the CDOT, which is the Technical Design Advisory Panel, if you need to, and go to the Planning Commission of the Governor. So, this view up here that you're looking at, this is actually the corner of uh, Logan, which is on the left, and Wiley, which is on the right. And what we're looking at is the corner of the, uh, the music venue. As uh, it's been mentioned earlier, it's about a 4,500 seat facility. The entrance would be down there at the bottom of the, uh, the intersection. To the left would be the garage, you kind of see it off there to the left. And then to the right, going up widely, we'd have retail right in the center of the block there. Next slide, please. So, this is a view from Bedford, which would be on the left, and Logan on the right. So, now we're looking at the garage itself. And so, to the left there, on the far left, you have the pump is that's where the revenue facility would be. That at the corner of uh, Bedford and Fullerton. Uh, and that's what will house um, emergency vehicles and so forth. 
and then on the right side, on the right, you see the edge of the venue. Right there in the center, it's kind of hard to see the slide based on the scale of this, is where the actual uh, hanging branch would be. So just where the car would go down. Uh, and to the right of that would be the retail space. And to the right of that would be the uh, lobby for the drive itself. So as we come here, we basically go and we're going to basically leave uh, the building right here at the center of the block and head towards uh, across the street or down to the intersection of Wiley and Logan. So the materials on this are primarily the sort of bluish grayish are metal panels perforated that are breathable. And then what's interspersed in there are uh, terracotta, uh, terracotta elements. And what happens is that these terracotta elements kind of start off small as they go around and then as they can go towards the center of the block and towards the sort of energy of Wiley and Logan, uh, they increase and sort of draw our eye to the uh, to the main sort of focus of the block, which would be the venue itself. And it's a little bit hard to see on the slide, uh, but what we're going to do is incorporate words that are relevant to kind of the, the nature of the history of the legacy in the site. So maybe we'll see read on there, we have legacy and other, and other words, and then those will be back at night so we have to see them in the evening. Next slide. So these are some of the floor plans. So the floor plan is basically like a view from above. And so what we're looking at before you do is that we have Bennett on the left side, we have Logan at the bottom, Fullerton at the top, and we have Wiley on the right side. The block is basically divided between two buildings. On the left side, you've got the garage, so we have that yellow area, I have the one and then the red, that's part of the garage portion. And I, like I said, you enter from the ground level, Logan. And then on the right side is the venue itself. This is where they'll have the actual lobby entry to the venue. And also on the right side, there a bit block and widely would be uh, the other retail space. Next slide. Next slide. Hey guys, um, in the back, it does require your conversation a little bit. So I want to thank you for being out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so going up, the, the floor plans become fairly repetitive. Uh, so this is the second floor plan, and you see that the parking garage actually kind of extends over the site. It was a really cheap, uh, deep change in elevation. If you've ever walked a section of Bedford, you know, it was a 40 foot track change in elevation. It was one corner of the site and the other corner of the site. And so the garage and the road is live. And then again, on the right side, you see the, uh, the main floor uh, of the venue. And moving forward, we go up and then actually off of four to the third level, there would be a secondary uh, vehicular entrance into the garage. Next slide. And then on the top two floors, the fourth and the sixth are similar. At the top left there, uh, so that, that purple box, that's where the bump well, safety facility would be. And then all the yellow is just rest of the garage and again on the right side of the venue. Next slide. Very similar. We're basically looking at the roof plan to explore. And next slide. Uh, this is the highly technical slide. Uh, we've got a lot of these types of things. I'm just kind of show you the sort of the new brain uh, and, and uh, different operations considerations we're looking at with respect to the venue itself to make sure it's done in a safe way. Next slide. And so this slide right here is very important. This is the corner of Wiley to the left, forward to the right. Uh, at this intersection, there's a very uh, uh, intersection in place. Uh, for the, the music legacy of the hill, uh, especially on this uh, on this particular street in particular. So what we decided to do is at this very prominent corner uh, is incorporate images that sort of celebrate that uh, legacy. And so that entire corner there, you can kind of see the images uh, in, in, in between those windows. So the the three uh, the three windows there kind of suggest a piano. Again, owing to the legacy of the hill. And then we also have all these uh, beautiful images that can actually be incorporated right into the side. And to give you a sense of scale, those are about 20 foot tall. So these are very prominent. Okay, and now I'm going to turn it over to Craig Donald from the Penguins. Thank you, Eric. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Craig Dunham. Um, I've been supporting this project for about 10 years. And a month ago, joined the uh, Penguin, I've been 10 years as a consultant. And a month ago, joined the Penguins uh, so that I could focus all my time and energy on this project. And I'm really excited about this point where we're at. Um, I want to spend a few minutes kind of not talking specifically about Lockheed, 
But um, what we have before us in a presentation that will go before the Planning Commission with an amendment to our preliminary land development plan. And the preliminary land development plan is the regulatory framework that we advance the development on the lower hill within. When we put it together and started working on it about 10 years ago, we were looking very carefully at what had just been published, uh, the Greater Hill District Master Plan. Uh, at the same time, uptown neighborhood plan was getting put together. The green print was a, a document that had been recently completed. And we were trying to integrate all of those elements into a specific plan for the lower hill. Um, next slide, please. And um, what we ended up producing in 2014, that it was eventually adopted by the Planning Commission, is uh, the master plan vision for the site. We also created a uh, special zoning district. It's called Special Plan District 11 for the Lower Hill. And that is uh, zoning that is administered through city council uh, for, for modifications. So those are two really important technical frameworks that we work within on the Lower Hill. It's been you know, a number of years um, since those were created. And we feel that for a variety of reasons that I'll walk you through, uh, we need to amend that document, the PLDP, at this point in time. So next slide, please. Um, so the idea behind this and, and really what's driving um, our changes in the plan are really wanting to clarify and build on this notion of Wiley Avenue as the center of the site and how we create spaces and places that the community can come to experience uh, both the history and the opportunity that that corridor presents. We've organized buildings, we've organized open spaces, we've organized pedestrian pathways along that central Wiley Avenue. And the image on, um, on the right is uh, sort of an updated site master plan vision for the site, showing you kind of how the open spaces and the public spaces within the development are organized. Next slide, please. Um, so as I mentioned, the, the plan that we're working with was created in 2014. Since that time, a number of things have happened. Streets have been built that were planned. Wiley Avenue, Logan Street, and Fullerton Street have been constructed and dedicated to the city. Uh, the I-579 park project, camp project that we were talking about has been realized. It's the Frankie Mae Pace Park that opened last year. Um, so we wanted to reflect those things that have actually occurred. And then the next set of um, amendments that we want to respond to is the desire to not construct more streets. One of the things that we, I think maybe many of us have experienced that those streets that were constructed, particularly on the Wiley, are very, very steep. And if we continued with the planned streets that haven't been built, they'd be equally steep. And um, it doesn't create, in our opinion, a situation that's accessible and approachable. So we want to not build those streets and create the open spaces as the pathway uh, for moving through the site. Um, we made some adjustments with the FMB Tower project and the way that organizes the block that we refer to as G um, and a couple of other technical things that we need to clean up. So that's basically why we're doing this. Next slide, please. And what it looks like um, is on the left is plan for blocks streets that was approved in 2014. And what you can see on the right is our proposed provisions to that plan not building the streets uh, on the upper blocks, which we refer to as A, B, and C, and not building that lower section of Wiley, uh, but instead utilizing alleys, pathways, courtyards, um, and the open spaces as the tools to navigate uh, for pedestrians and accommodate uh, those in need of, of access for, for disabled using those mechanisms and tools instead of uh, building more streets that will be uh, very, very steep. Next slide, please. Um, there's another important reason why we're doing this at this point in time in conjunction with the Block E project. Under the um, zoning requirements that we have, 
and the preliminary land of open land are supposed to create what they call urban open space, which is public space for public benefit, um, being created by the development. We needed to make some adjustments in that. And um, what will happen with Block E will be the creation of another area of open space that's just off of Wiley. Uh, or at the end of Wiley and along Logan Street, you can kind of see it here in that tan or orange color. So that portion of the development advances from the creation of open space along with the blocking project. And that's why the timing of this amendment is happening now because the two projects relate to each other. Next slide. All right, so I will turn it over to Dr. Ellis, um, and that's really a quick summary of what we're doing with the amendment to the preliminary amendment. Thank you. If you felt that's right, so give me five quick minutes, and we will not see this. Um, as you all know, as I said earlier, we are guided legally by the community collaboration and implementation plan. Um, we have seven different areas of engagement, minority and women business enterprise inclusion, inclusionary and home ownership housing programs, coordinated community development strategies, communication reporting and tracking, which I'm going to come back to in a second, job creation, local inclusion, and workforce development, well building initiatives, and cultural and community legacy initiatives. And just with my community hat on, I just want to say, Hill District, I'm so proud of you guys. I tell everybody we are the strongest. And most organized, one of the most organized communities in the United States of America. Make no mistake about it, nobody has to do this. So, this is your work that we have worked on literally, I don't know, the past four years or something. That the first community that was about 2005, 2008, something like that. I don't remember. But the point is, this is a developmental organization. These are community demands, as well as how corporate leadership is going to be. Those in there. This is a signed document. This is not flowery promises that the developers give it that never that, that you can't hold people accountable to. So I, I can't stress that enough. Um, when it comes to communication and reporting and tracking, I want you to be very clear. A lot of the numbers that you see and a lot of the graphs that you see, we report back to what's called the executive management committee every single month. Every month. So they follow our tracking. If you're on the executive management committee, can you raise your hand and does I am from here? I know I am, I saw I am earlier, but Council Bell is on the executive management committee, Tyler Battle, Alicia George, uh, Glenn Brazen Jr., uh, Glenn Mahone, uh, and then there's some elected officials. So those people, we report to them every month. Every quarter, we report to the SEA, the Sports and Exhibition Authority, the URA, the Urban Development Authority, uh, and that's basically covers many different avenues in the city. So I just want you all to be very clear that it's a constant uh, attempt to meet these goals and to report on our goals. Next. So with the Black uh reinvestment plan, Basically, these are all the areas where we're like meeting the season. But I'm going to skip this one for the sake of time, but I think I'll post some of these things. But you see redevelopment team information, MWB participation, 25% tax, parking tax diversion, or authority, whatever that next slide. Um, investments by minority owned partners, the Indian board. Um, we had five companies, just like real quick, we had five companies that were. We tried to work with for Block E, and two of them just said they just did it out of capacity. And that's okay, you know, but we're going to keep working working on that. And so three others said, yes, yeah, no, we're working with none. We had seven. Well, oh, we had seven. Sorry, sorry. We had seven and five said, yes. I just remember that two said they, they couldn't um, they couldn't work on the project. Uh, we talked about the we talked about the bodies and public parks and open space. The relocation of public safety, the liability management, and grant making for the commercial initiative. So that, that's the piece that that's our line that we'll see the reinvestment. But what we're here for is the ready to go the straight matter. Next one. All right, so who we'll else is fire, please? We work really hard. So a lot of this we've already covered, thank goodness. So the $7.1 million is already covered that. 
the $80 million housing opportunity fund with the 900 phase garage over 20 years, we covered that. $50 million of contracts and WDDs, we covered that. What we did in fact we cover, and something I really want you all to pay attention to, is the first national bank provided funds for the small contractors line of credit program, which is being held at the further reason of the world. Now, I know it was kind of hard for you all to hear your video just because of the socializing, but please do watch that video when we release it. But you're going to hear from Brad say that when he, when he started to work on his business as an entrepreneur, that the bank only gave him $5,000 to support his business. And he said, like, you know, you have to pay my company. I'm going to do it back. This is where this small contract and line of credit program comes into play because there's a hundred thousand dollars sitting down there waiting for you to apply. A hundred thousand dollars is a lot because you have to pay people in advance before you actually get the money back on the development. Um, I'll get to the call for artists. Um, I talked about the one million dollars in funding to business and public safety. I'm skipping the first one, but I think for a second. Um, Eric talked about the street level incubator for local retail businesses. And now I'm going to get to the first one center and on partnership with the Public School of Career and Secondary Education Program. Next slide. So, the first one center, many of you are very familiar with it at this point. Um, if you're not familiar, Avita, can you stand up and real quick? <laughs> Avita is the first one center t shirt. Um, and she is a member of the street team, so if you're back, um, you can go ahead and get the shirt. Um, but she's the first one center for the street team. So, if you're back, and that's important because, you know, one for a If you have any teenagers or young people, uh, please do send them our way. We really do need a street team. Um, but the first one center is our workforce development center, it is our business resource center, and our construction contractor. So if you want, if you are a construction contractor, our drawings are sitting at the first one center. You need the drawings to make assessment and to estimate what your project is going to be. Um, usually it's really expensive to kind of like get those drawings yourself or it's kind of hard once they basically send it in an electronic format. So those drawings are sitting there waiting for you. Um, we definitely hire people. Um, there's four programs that we, we work with a lot of programs, but there's four major programs that I want you to be very clear about. The top is the A of Randolph Institute. You all often see them described as APRI. And I keep telling them not to do that because people really need to know who A Philip Randolph is. The second is the Builder Guild of Western Pennsylvania. Those are people, these programs, they are five to eight weeks. That's it, five to eight weeks, and you can change your whole life. The CART program is the Carpenters and Apprenticeship Readiness Program. And once again, you do that. I'm telling you all, if you know young people or if you're, if you're an older person that they, you know, not ages around here, uh, you need to join this program if you want to, to change your life. And, and I can tell you stories, I don't have time right now, but I have stories about people who have changed their lives by being in this program. And the training is only five to eight weeks, it's just imagine. Um, when you go to the Builders Guild, you have a guaranteed job at the end. Um, and honestly, if you go through any of them, you are very, very likely to be employed. Then there's also the Bank Works program. I want to congratulate Sherry Nichols. Uh, she just went through the Bank Works program. Uh, she's a Hill resident, and uh, she's now working as a teller at First National Bank. Um, and then to our right, that picture is a wonderful picture because one, this is one of the ways that we are supporting small businesses, right? But we had the first person in our job here. We uh, had Rick Summers, who is a, uh, well, he's, he's an he's a MBE, but he's also related to Mark Summers. Uh, but Rick is our official photographer, and Rick took headshots for all the business people that, or anybody that wants to take a headshot. So everybody was really excited about that and getting those headshots. The person in that picture is Diane Blondell, who is back from the point. And we look like her suit and uh, we support her. So we're really happy about her progress and all the things that she's doing. And she's also in the video. Next slide. Um, and I want to just draw your attention, especially because we're, we're talking about alignment with the Greater Hill District Master Plan, is that these are all under the economic empowerment and commercial development. That's important that we're meeting these goals. So the job fair is in the lower right corner. 
of the screen. Many of you attended that. We're having another one. There's one coming up at, on November um, 5th. It is not ours, but we're pushing it because it's the union. And the union trades, the union trades are having a job fair at the Native Dawn Convention Center on November 5th. Please mark that date. Please mark that date. Um, and so the rest of just pictures of our street team. Right here. Next slide. Um, our partnership with the Pittsburgh Public Schools Career and Technical Education Program has been fantastic. One of the things that I want to talk about is that one, we have a career inspiration day at PPG Arena. A lot of those young people have never been in PPG Arena, and they were able to be mentored by a lot of the professionals on our team. That was a very important day, and uh, that's actually pretty key on your right and my right in, in, in that picture. Um, and that's the president of Lucini Palmer. The picture uh, that's in the upper right corner is very important because I asked the PTE program, what do you all need? Right? You can't assume that you know what people need. And what they asked us for. They said every time we have seniors that are getting ready to go to the Department of Friends um, trade, they need boots. They don't have enough for their boots, so they're struggling. Some people, they don't want to say that they're struggling, so they just don't tell anybody, and then they don't have the material that they need, and then they're not going to the program. Or they might be late, or it's just like, it's a whole bunch of drama. And so we just said, well, why don't we buy boots? And so these are that's them shopping themselves, getting their work week. And all of these young people have gone into uh, the Department of Defense program. And the reason why I featured it up there is because we received uh, an award. I mean, I didn't, I, to be honest, I didn't think it was for normal exceptional, but Angela Mike told me actually Richard Cohen is exceptional. And uh, so they gave us an award. So there you go. Uh, next slide. Um, this was this was us at the arena. Can we talk about that next slide? All right. So the urban open space. This is another part. This is now another section, right? Greater Blue District Master Plan Alignment, building upon the African American cultural legacy. Craig shows the open space. I show the open space. It's also in this picture here. We did a lower hall, lower hill open space hall for artists. Twenty nine artists applied. Um, we were unabashed when we said we were going to privilege co residents and we want to privilege local artists. And so the winners, the finalists are here. Um, from the Ramirez Machine, Charlotte Paul, and Elmo Division Reynolds, the Ron Baby, Brandon Jennings, Jay Simon, Samuel Richardson is going to be our fabricator consultant, Brian Peters, Barlana Vassar, the Todd Gaffan Ricardo. Open uh, with the Humanity Awards team and Casey Jackson. So give them a round of applause. These are our practice leaders. I think LeBron is here. Congratulations, LeBron. You deserve it. Amazing. Um, the really was amazing. So we basically have a continuation of the schedule here. We just said the next thing we release our list. And let me just say this really quickly. We were very careful at picking these artists because the next phase is just for them to propose what they're going to do. But here's the difference. We're paying the artists to create the proposal. How many times have you been asked to volunteer or do things? And you say, it's annoying, right? And so this is one of the parts. They may seem small, but it's not small. And they're not going to get paid an insignificant amount either. <laughs> so uh, that, that's our low call, low and call, uh, open space call for us. Thanks, Lyle. And then what we're doing in the urban open, open, open space, which also builds upon the African American cultural legacy, basically the lower school development team, and specifically at the time, David Morehouse, was really, really impressed with what we were doing. At Frankie Bay Pace Park. I want you all to be very clear. Frankie Bay Pace Park is considered a neighborhood park. This is literally your park. So the community, which consisted of people like Justin Lane, uh, which consisted of people like Bonnie Young, Rebecca Malayan, Terry Baltimore, I was carried to be at the time, so I wasn't even in the picture. 
And they demanded that Hill residents be a part of actually designing the park. And I want to thank them for that because I really appreciate it. I, I, I really appreciate that because when I was chosen, I felt exactly like the law and the other part of still today, knowing that they've been chosen. It definitely shifted aspects of the bottom. So Keisha is actually one of my creations. Um, not that I'm too graphic art, I'm hired someone. But we told Vanessa to do brand with what we wanted. And all the different iterations of Keisha, you can see she's playing, she's dancing, she looking at the North Star because we know that we are a part of the underground building here. Um, she's reading a book and on the front cover is reading about Harriet Tubman, on the back cover is reading about Martin the Lady. Like all those things are really important. So they liked what they saw and said, can you do some replication of that across the street? And we said, yes. So that's the work that the artists are gonna work on. And we, we met an artist down at Frankie Bay Bay Park and showed them how we designed the um, park. One of the last things about the park that is abstract, and if you may have missed it, so I'm going to point it out. If you look in the middle, um, Amir Rashid and all of us, really, um, we really wanted to incorporate the same focal part. And so uh, I think I was, I was standing up over looking over the drawing, and basically I just thought, like, you know, but if we do this, if we turn it this way, this could be the same focal part. And so you can't see the same focal part except for if you're hot enough. But the same open bird is the box is facing this way and the hand turns to the back to remind you that you can't move forward into a brighter future if you don't know your history. So the same open bird is abstract as there and present in that color. Next slide. Yeah. I think Jill wants us to move forward. Right. To do that. And we're right here. Yeah. We're literally right here as your scorecard. So this is what you have. And we have gone over build upon the African American cultural legacy, family friendly housing development without displacement, not going to five years, economic empowerment and commercial development, making the Hill District a free and well designed community, and mobility, transportation, and parking. And that's for both the Lower Hill PLVP Amendment and the Parking Garage of Live Nation. Thank you all so much for your time. We really appreciate your attention.